Corporal Hale. Inspector Manning's ordered you to report to his office at once. Corporal Hale reporting, sir. Send him in. Hale, I'm detaining you to take over Corporal Grant's patrol in the Mackenzie River District. You know that country, don't you? I made a trip over it when I first joined the service, sir. I thought so. Well, Grant's in the hospital, sick. You'll have to get away just as soon as you can. Here's a map of the district. Help refresh your memory. The trading post there is run by Peter Barclay. Remember the name. Peter Barclay. I remember, sir. Constable Mallory is covering the patrol now. You'll find him somewhere along the lines. Very good, sir. Any special orders? No routine work, but get started just as soon as you can. At once, sir. Twenty-five dollars is as much as I'll pay for. Twenty-five dollars? Barkley, that skin's worth fifty if it's worth a cent. And you know it. Twenty-five is what I'll pay. And a cent more. Take it or leave it. I'll take it, because I'll have to. But if my wife wasn't sick and I didn't need supplies... Supplies? Helen will take care of your supplies. Helen! Helen! Red Wing has got $25 credit. No more. What can I do for you today, Red Wing? Your uncle isn't a fair trader. Uncle Peter's a bit bothered today. The inspectors from the home office here are going over the books. That might be, ma'am. But $25 for a skin like that White robbery. I'll speak to him later and see if I can get you a better price. And that's mighty kind of you, Miss Allen. I don't like to be putting you to any trouble. Oh, that's no trouble, Red Wing. This is a serious matter, Buck. Ten thousand is a lot of money. I've explained all that to you. Had I known you were coming, money would have been here. That's not the point. It's not here now. And if I turn in a report to the home office that there's a shortage in your accounts of $10,000, well... But there really isn't any shortage. Give me a little time and I'll have every cent of it. <laughs> Understand, we're not questioning your honesty. You have a clean record. I'll give you two weeks to get your accounts in order. Thanks, Mackenzie. And I'll have every cent of it and you can depend on that. Very well, then. I'll be back in a fortnight. Goodbye, Barkley. Good day. Well, you had enough? Yes, no, ma'am. By this time tomorrow, we'll both be with Helen. Now, won't you like that? Hey, won't you like that? Helen. 
Jerry. Surprised to see me? Well, that's only natural, isn't it? I haven't seen you since you were through here two years ago. But I wrote and told you that I'd been transferred. I never received your letter. I wonder if Peter Barclay had something to do with it. You knew he was against anyone in uniform. And me in particular. That's probably why I was transferred to this patrol. Why I didn't get any answers to my letters. Jerry, you really wrote more than once? I... I thought you didn't dare. More than I dared tell you, Ellen. How'd your father, Helen? Did he still make his periodic visits? Well, last time I heard from him, why, he said he'd be here sometime this month. It's any day now. Oh, that's great. Have you made his big strike yet? He didn't mention it in his last letter. I'll bet he does someday. <laughs> <laughs> We're here again, eh? Well, hello, Barkley. Corporal Grant is sick. I've been detailed to take over his patrol. Where are you heading for when you leave here? I'm cutting through the woods, heading for the fork in the river. I expect to run across Constable Mallory in that locality. Is Mallory at the river fork? No. He knows I'm coming, so he'll probably ride down to meet me. Best keep to the trail. It's longer, but safer. I have known men to get lost and not find their way out for two weeks. Thanks for the warning, Barkley. I'll take your advice until I'm better acquainted with the territory. Goodbye, Helen. Goodbye, Jerry. Give your father my regards. I might see him before he gets here. Wrong. Wrong? What could be wrong? I don't know, but I heard the inspector say something about a shortage. My accounts are always straight. The person would think to hear you talk that I was trying to rob the company. Maybe you have. How about your dealings with the Indians? That's business. That's my business. And if I find you poking your nose in the... Never mind. I'm running this post. And when I want advice from you, I'll ask. Now, you listen to me, Peter Barclay. I've taken all the abuse from you that I'm going to take. Father has as much interest in this post as you have, and I'm going to see that his interest is protected. Your father. <laughs> He's talking the big strikes. Well, he isn't here yet, and I'm getting sick and tired of your crap. You'll listen to plenty when Father gets here. Get out! Find out anything? Old man got plenty gold. I'm camping for the river for tonight. You head for the cabin and I'll get my horse and catch up with you. Helen! I'm going out with Lobo to look at some skin. You look after things here. And remember, no credit. Don't you? <laughs> Barkley? <laughs> Listen, if you have any trouble with Barkley, leave him to me. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> you fellas lay off of this stuff until this job is finished. That was our last bottle. Gonna be your last bottle. Well, 
Listen here, Carney. And you too, Breen. Old man Brent has made his strike. He's camping at the Forks. Lobo trailed him there. Corporal Hale is headed in that direction, and we've got to beat him to it. Yes, sir. Come on, let's get out of here. Come on, come on. You boys see what's around the camp. I'll stay here. Brent mustn't recognize me. Shot him in the back. It was an accident. The dog jumped on the back and the gun went off and I tried to... Well, you killed him all right. Nothing here. Take a drink of this, Mr. Brent. He ain't dead. I'm glad it's you, son. 
I can trust you. What happened, Mr. Brent? I made my strike, and that's what they were after. But they didn't get it. I buried it. We better beat it out of here before the money picks up our trail. Right. You fellas get back to the shack, and I'll get the trading post. First breeze. Looking out for Lobo. Here. What's the idea? This is Amani's gun. That's Hale's gun. What? You bumped him off? <laughs> no. I let the law do that. The law. You're crazy. 
Not so crazy. We're going to frame him from the murder to Brent. But we got to work fast. Ain't forgot your old grudge, eh, Barkley? No, and I ain't likely to. Don't forget he was wise to our game two years ago when I pulled some strings and had him transferred. Do you think he knows it? Well, if he don't, tell old spell it. She knows too darn much anyway. Now listen. You find Lobo and give him that gun, and you and he go back there to the fort. Nevelin ain't gonna do you no good. Your father's dead. And if he'd have told me of this strike, this wouldn't have happened. Perhaps if you read this, you'll understand. Tell no one about the strike. Above all, your Uncle Barkley. I never quite trusted him. That's gratitude. After all these years, I've slaved at this post so that he could go and get his poke. You always sneered at Dad when he said that he'd make a strike. Perhaps that's why he didn't trust you. Oh, more likely another one of his wild tales. We ain't got no proof there's any gold. And why was he shot down in cold blood? Did you ever say anything to Hale about your father's strike? Father asked me to tell no one. You were talking about your father when I broke in on you. And the Maudie was headed for Three Forks then. Are you trying to insinuate that Jerry had anything to do with it? Well, I ain't saying nothing. Yet. She ain't here. Why? Her father's been shot. Murdered. Murdered? You know who done it? I don't know how it happened as yet. He died before he could tell me anything about it. All he did was give me a message for Helen. You can give me the message and I'll tell her. Now I'll wait till I see her. She won't be back till tomorrow. She rode back into the hills to see one of the trapper's kids that's been sick. It doesn't matter. It'll keep like a back from headquarters. Corporal Hale is here to report, sir. Says the sergeant. Hale? Send him in. Yes, sir. Sir, I have to report the murder of a Nathan Brent, a prospector. 
I received the report of Brent's murder an hour ago, Corporal. An hour ago? And the report accuses you of his murder. But that is impossible, sir. Let me see your gun. I lost it on the way down here, sir. Hmm. My horse stumbled and, and threw me. I was knocked out for a time, and when I recovered, it was gone. Is this it? I don't know, sir. It's covered with mud. It is mine. May I ask how you come to have it, sir? According to my report, that gun was taken from the river where it was thrown after Brent was killed. One shot had been fired from it. There's an empty shell on that gun, sir. It was fired after I lost it. That would be very hard to prove, Hale. But why should I have to prove it? What reason would I have for killing Mr. Brent? That letter makes very bad evidence, Hale. The report says three men saw you bending over Brent shortly after the shot was fired. Then they saw you go down and throw something into the river. After you left, they went down and fished out of the river what had been thrown in. It was your gun. The lie, sir. I feel it is, Hale, and that you can vindicate yourself of this charge. I can. That'll mean breaking my promise to Brent before he died. A charge is so serious that you would be justified. Brent gave me a map to a cache of gold he buried before he was attacked. But he swore me a secrecy to tell no one but her. This map will show where Brent's gold is buried. And that gold will prove that I am telling the truth. I'll send two men out there immediately. But in the meantime, you must consider yourself under arrest. Very well, sir. much as much use digging anymore. I know, but I hate to quit. It hails a big chance of him clearing himself. Well, if I thought there was any chance finding that gold, I wouldn't stop digging for reach China. Well, I hope we don't see Hale when we report we can't find it. That looks bad for you, Hale. You mean you didn't find the gold? There was none there. And this is the bullet that killed Brent. It was fired from your gun. Didn't kill him, sir. If I were free, I'd prove it. I had this bullet extracted from Brent's body, thinking it would aid you. But instead, it's furnished a stronger proof against you. I can't understand it, sir. I still believe you, Hale. But I have no alternative. Are you dead sure? Don't worry, Barkley. We fixed it so only one bullet would be found. Tough luck, Jerry. Thanks, Ted. What is it? What do you want? I want to know if what Connie told me is true. What did he tell you? That Jerry Hale is accused of murdering my father. Yes, Helen, it's true. Do you believe that he did it? What else can I believe? The gold disappeared, and Hale was the only one with Brent when he died. He's guilty all right, Miss Helen. The Mounties even found his gun where he hid it. 
with one shot fired. Thanks, Carney. That'll fix her. How about fixing me, Barkley? Hey? back next week or next month. I tried that. It didn't work. Because you came to see you and intended to stay until she did. All right, I'll see her. I want her to be careful of a dangerous criminal. Maybe she likes him that way. shouldn't have come here. I came here to see what kind of a being would shoot an old man, his friend, in the back. Then you think I'm guilty? Even the gallows is too good for you. That's why I'm here. To treat you the same as you did my father. I suppose it's useless for me to tell you how sorry I am. You wouldn't believe me in face of the evidence that's against me. But I didn't. Do you believe me or not? I am innocent. Yes. Your kind are always innocent. If I could get out of here, I'd prove it to you. I'd... Oh, what's the use? There isn't a chance. And the ones who did kill your father would go free. And you didn't see the gold? No. Your father trusted me to his hiding place and swore me to tell no one but you. And you didn't, of course. Yes. I told the inspector, hoping it would clear me of the charge. But it disappeared. Yes. Disappeared as mysteriously as your gun. I can't explain how my gun showed up that way. Unless... Unless it wasn't an accident that caused my horse to throw me. It's an old Indian trick. Are you trying to make me believe that someone made your horse stumble? I know it sounds sort of weak, but yet it, it sort of ties up with some Indian beads I found near the spot where your father was attacked. I didn't tell that to the inspector. Too bad you didn't. It makes a very interesting story, but hardly convincing. Doc. I told you fellas to stay away from here. Sure you did. Now, oh, you fellas came here after money, you're out of luck. They didn't get branded gold, and you fellas haven't got anything coming to you. Uh, we know that, Barkley. We know who killed Brand. That ought to be worth something for us to keep our mouths shut, hadn't it? Well, you'll squeal, huh? If I don't pay you, is that it? We framed that Molly, too, didn't we? Yeah, and Lobo had to ride all night to get the headquarters of Fort Hale. That ought to be worth something, too. Well, you did help some, and I'm willing to be reasonable. Ah, oh, don't mind counting, Parkley. Did 
give Lobo bottom, huh? I'm sorry to trouble you, but could I see Corporal Hale again? But against the rules, it's our miss. Oh, but it's very important. I won't be a moment. Please. All right, miss. Ready to see you again, Hale. Unlock that cell. You can't get away at this, Miss Brandt. Come out, Mr. Hale. Lock it. Helen. I'm going to give you a chance to prove your innocence. Quick. Hey, Sergeant, help! Hey, let us out of here! Hey, Sergeant! Let us out of here! Hey, what's happening? The thief's tail got away. Hello? Yes, this is Barkley. What? What, my niece? Both of them? You say they're they're headed for here? Uh, yes, if she comes, I'll hold her. Yes. Sure. Yes, goodbye. What's the matter now? Hell's popping. Hell is free. What's the matter? You turn him loose? Turn him loose, nothing. This meddlesome niece of mine pulled a jailbreak. And? And that fool inspector thinks they're coming up here. Maybe he's right. Maybe he's come gunning for you. Gunning for me, nothing. You pick up this gold and head for the border with her. Well, what do you want me to do? Do! Get out there and get some of the others and head them off. Remember that Hale is a fugitive from justice. And you might have to do some shooting. Well, I told you fellas to stay away from here. You got money for Lobo? No more money. How did you know it was an accident? Don't talk about accident. 
Lobo see more. Maybe Lobo tell. Watch you. Now get out. So you're here. Where's Hale? Where have you got him hid? That's my business and his, not yours. All packed, eh? Planning to leave. Well, it won't work. You're staying here till the Maudis come. If what Jerry tells me is true, Peter Barkley, you'll be the one going to jail. <laughs> Anyone here?
Sergeant. I bet you this is the goal that Jerry Hale needed to clear himself with Brent's murder. Sergeant? Yes, what is it? I followed Hale and the girl as far as Silver Creek. I lost him at the fort. Barkley had a shack out in that direction. Let's see if we can't pick him up. Right. Glad to see you, Hale. Maybe you can tell us what it is, old man Brent's gold. I think you fellows know more about that than I do. Particularly your Indian friend. I thought you would double cross with me. No, you don't. Now, Hale, maybe I'll tell us what you did at old man Brent's gold. Bobo, come here.
Where is your knife? Knife lost. Well, I found it. In Barclay's back. So, Carney, you want to know where Brent's gold was, huh? Well, your partner Barclay has double-crossed all of you. He found the gold planted undercover in his office. All right, then. Take him out. Helen? If you seriously want to go in for knife throwing, balance your knife a little bit more to the center. Then you don't throw so high. Take your time about reporting for duty, Jerry. I'll explain to the inspector. Thank you, sir.